Hey, really quick before this video begins. I recorded this stuff earlier last week without knowing the devs would be posting patch notes. I'll be releasing another video comparing the thoughts I expressed in this one till it was actually changed very soon. Until then though, enjoy. Hello everybody, my name is Kalo and today I'm going to be talking about balance changes for the upcoming game Death Garden. Now real quick, if you want to learn more about what Death Garden actually is, I'll have a link to another video for that in the description down below. Alright, so last time we got to play it was in the closed beta test uh, in late June, and with the early access soft launch happening next week on the 9th, followed by the full early access launch on the 14th, I wanted to express my hopes for the balance changes between the beta test and now, along with give my thoughts on upcoming features that have recently been teased on their Twitter. So firstly, the atmosphere around balance right now is, for the most part, two-sided. We've got the average runners complaining about how overpowered the hunter is, and we've got the average hunters complaining about how hard it is to deal with pre-made groups of runners. Now, to be clear, I don't say average to belittle or throw doubt at individual player skill, but rather so that I can emphasize how different of a game Death Garden is when played at a high level. I'll go more in detail with that later on, but the relevant point for now is that balance should be focused towards that more competitive level of play. So how do we balance something when both sides of the table are unhappy with it? Well, let's start with the things most players agree on. In this case, the shotgun. In a word, this thing is ridiculous. It's got the damage, it's got the fire rate, it's got the range, it's got everything, really. Where for some guns, I may be more inclined to suggest subtler nerfs, this one simply needs to be hit hard. Its clip size is a massive 12 rounds that you reload all at once, and its quick fire rate along with that makes for a weapon that's unfair and unfun. I'd like to see the clip brought down to somewhere between 5 and 8, and for the fire rate to be decreased to something that feels more like a pump. Ideally, the shotgun will still be a good weapon that's fun to use, but it's currently such a powerhouse that not using it is putting yourself as a hunter at a disadvantage. Oh, and one more note about the shotgun, the knockback distance when you down somebody, yikes. As for the hunter's other weapons though, changes aren't as drastically needed. The sniper, for instance, is able to 2 to 3 tap a runner, depending on if you hit headshots. Pair that with a solid fire rate, and you've got a powerful weapon. However, it's got the quite literally glaring drawback of a giant laser sight that traces wherever the hunter is aiming, which alerts runners when they're being targeted. Then, we've got the AR and the LMG, which the community seem to be on the fence about, some preferring one over the other. My personal take is that because of a quick reload speed and solid ability to hack objectives, while still having decent damage to take down runners, the AR is better. However, I'm told that technically the LMG has a higher DPS, although I've not seen actual proof. I'd be interested to see what your choice between the two is down in the comments below. Next, we've got the hunter's abilities. Right off the bat, let's talk about the turret. This brings us back to the pain point between average runners thinking hunters are OP and vice versa, and for good reason. There are many issues with AI controlled power in games, but the main thing is how different it affects newer, more casual players compared to better, more experienced ones. As Greg Street from Riot Games says, AI power just doesn't scale really well with skill level. If you think of the power as a, as a pie chart, the AI part of that power takes up a big part of that pie chart. It doesn't really change depending on whether you're talking at, at low or high skill level. This inevitably leads me into a discussion about more general issues with balancing asymmetrical games at both a casual and competitive level, but I'll save that for another video. In the meantime, what can be done about the turret without entirely removing it from the game right now? Well, before I make my suggestions, I'd like to bring up another hunter ability called ICU. For those that don't know what it does, when activated, all runners in an area around you are revealed for a moderate amount of time. It's a decent ability, until you realize that your other choices, the turrets and mines, do the same thing in different ways on top of having offensive utility. The turrets will shoot at runners hiding in bushes, and sometimes even behind walls and trees, and the mines will blow up almost immediately when placed in a bush a runner is hiding in. Why use an ability that only gives information when your other options do the same plus more? I'd like to see ICU buffed or reworked in some way. Maybe activating it doesn't immediately reveal targets, but will make any shots you hit for the next few seconds reveal any runner tagged for a longer duration, increasing the skill ceiling for the ability. If not that, maybe add a passive effect to it that reveals runners who are extremely close to the hunter. Heck, it might even be as simple as just increasing the duration and or range of the ability considerably. 
Whatever the buff may be, the point is that, in my opinion, ICU definitely needs one if it's going to be used. As for the turret, let's stray away from the information game and hone in on its intended use, adding extra firepower to a hunter's arsenal. This can be done by simply lowering its max range and making it easier to see, and then giving it slight damage tweaks, either up or down, depending on how the new range makes it feel. I realize that potentially increasing the damage of the turret may sound frustrating for people who already don't like dealing with it, but consider that the lower range will result in less players being punished simply because they didn't spot the turret that's now lasering at them from drastically far away, and will be something that runners still need to respect and destroy when they do come across one. Then we've got the mines, which were the go-to for more experienced hunters in the closed beta. They're on a charge system with a relatively short cooldown, allowing a max of 10 in your inventory, along with another 10 active uh, in the garden at any time. As a runner, they're simple enough to take out if you're aware, but the issue with them rears its head around the blood post. Being able to place a bunch before someone is put up for execution is frustrating to deal with, even if the runners are coordinated. You see this happen with turrets as well, but in my opinion it's not as prevalent. I hope to see something change with how hunter abilities can be used around the blood post in general, whether it's a longer cooldown time when you're near it or simply a range restriction for placing your things down next to it. You might have noticed that my changes have been basically just hunter based and you'd be right. Like I said earlier, balance should be focused around the more competitive levels of play and I firmly believe that if you put the best runners up against the best hunter, the hunter would win more games by a large enough margin to warrant nerfs. Simply put, the mix of massive mobility and a high ceiling with FPS mechanics gives the hunter a little too much room to dominate right now. So how do we fix it? I realize I've proposed a lot of nerfs for the hunter, but that's simply because I believe the class is truly out of line right now. In most cases with balance, I prefer to buff the weaker side, and this can be pinpointed at the runner's core, their agility. Let's keep it simple. Make running feel smoother. Quicker turns, longer climbing time, slightly more move speed, maybe even another roll up from 2 to 3. Small changes like that can make a big difference for the running experience. Aside from that, and mind you, these next changes are basically just gut hopes more than anything else, but I'd be open to experimenting with a quicker capture time. Right now it feels really long, speeding up would help separate good hunters from the great ones in terms of macro play, and will shift some of those really close capture calls in favor of the runners. Also, this might sound weird, but I feel like Torment's a bit weak. Don't get me wrong, Virus and Degen are awesome abilities, but the class as a whole can't really defend itself like the others can. Maybe give Torment some actual CC? And well, that's a summary of my hopes for the balance changes to come. There is one more thing. They teased some new features on their Twitter the other day, specifically what seems to be a stealth mechanic for the Hunter, along with a new key base game mode. I haven't turned out any theories for the mode yet, but the stealth is really exciting to me. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the stun in the game, mostly because it feels cheap, but I also prioritize having that stamina for mobility over using it to have one of my targets stand still for just a second. That being said, being able to replace that with stealth that slowly drains your stamina on use is really intriguing. I'm not even sure if that'll be how it works, but one can hope. We'll have to see where it lands. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'm excited to see everybody in the garden soon. Until then, stay safe, stay beautiful, and I'll see you next time.